Hi, my name is Ivy Starnes. I'm a gated horse trainer in Fort Worth, Texas. Today we are talking about how to use stop and praise and how to use that to get more gait. The reason I want, really want to talk about this is so many people don't believe me. So I, I get people asking, you know, they say their horse is gating at a certain speed and they want the horse to go faster. And they ask me for help and I say, well, it's actually really simple. When your horse, so you take your horse out, he's gating, you ask for a tiny bit more speed. If he gives you a little bit more speed, stop and praise. And within a matter of a week, your horse will gate miles per hour faster. And that's it. That's all you have to do. But people don't believe me. They don't believe that you can take a horse when you want faster. The answer is actually to stop and do nothing. To stop and let the horse think about it for about 60 seconds to two minutes. So one to two minutes, you have to stop. Uh, and ideally, you've already trained your horse to be used to stopping. You ride where your horse is comfortable, make it easy, gradually make it harder. Now, another question, what if the horse is gating, but isn't gating consistently? So, you know, gates a few steps, then maybe gets either a little pacey, a little bit trotty gait, and you're like, I want a consistent gait. Well, what I say is before the horse gets trotty or pacey, you stop and praise. But what if they get trotty and you need to fix it? Well, if they're trotty, you lift the reins, lift the head, and as soon as they gate well, stop and praise. But what everybody does, and then at clinics, everybody says they do this, so you're not alone, is when the horse starts gating, they want more. So that even if they say, pet the horse and say, good boy, and they give a loose rein, which a lot of people do, the horse still gets trotty or pacey. So what's the solution? The solution is fix the gait, but then as soon as it gets smooth, stop and praise and be consistent. Stop and praise a lot. When I have horses and I'm working on the gait, initially I'm stopping and praising for a few steps, of course, but within a day or two, I'm stopping and praising for a hundred feet or a hundred steps or 200. And then within a couple weeks, I have the horse gating a mile or two on a loose rein and being very comfortable with it. And so it's not a matter of the horse will think he's going to get rewarded for stopping. And so he'll stop all the time. The thing is that the horse actually wants to go forward. All right. To me, this is a big deal that people come to clinics and they don't believe this will work. So this horse I'm going to show you was a horse uh, that was gating a little bit, but they wanted him to go faster. If you pushed him faster, he'd get trotty. And so that gait would get bouncy. And you're going to see that in this video. And he, so he wasn't consistent in his gait. And as soon as you sped him up, he either wanted to trot or he wanted to canter. So on day three, you see me really working with the canter. On day one, you see me working on consistency with lots of stop and praise. Actually, it's funny the lady that organized it and the owner and another lady that was really good friends with them, they watched me work this horse at the clinic and they were like, wow, we didn't believe stop and praise worked. But after seeing what you did with this horse, we now believe. And so I want that same reaction. I want people to share this video and learn how stop and praise gets a faster gait and a consistent gait because I teach it, but very few people actually do it. So here you go. Let's take a look this horse. So this guy, this was I very, I just got on and the owner, again, he's not consistent. He gates. So right, right. That's a nice little gate there. Beautiful little gate. I'm going to slow it down in just a sec and you're going to see a beautiful, even four bead gate. It's lovely. So here it is. Here's a slowdown. It's a, it's to me a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, as the feet hit the ground. And it's very consistent. But right here, he starts to get trotty. So it's, it's still four beats, but it's a broken trot. And you can kind of see me bouncing. It was not comfortable to sit. So if you watch the diagonal, see how they start to land close together? Not exactly together, because it's not a dead trot, but it's more trotty. Those legs swing forward together right there. It's a broken trot still, but it's almost a dead trot. Still uncomfortable to sit. Um, and that's, then he got smoother there. And then I release the reins and I want you to notice what my hands do. And even if you go back and watch this beginning part going in the other direction, he gets pacey. I'm going to slow that down when he's pacey. I'm asking for head down when he's trotty. I'm asking for head up. Now he is being ridden in a shanked bit. This is the bit the owner uses. And so I'm trying to be very light and you'll see that my hands are going to give a loose rein a lot of the time. So because he's pacing, I'm asking him to soften 
and drop his head, which we've talked about. And as soon as the gait does smooth out, I give him that loose rein. You're going to see me give lots of loose rein. And there it started to really smooth out and be four beats. And so I stop and praise. And again, that's super important is I fixed it. I fixed the trout, I fixed the pace, and then we stop and we praise because he gated nicely. And a lot of people are like, but you know, the horse is already going forward. Why would I want to stop him? It's so that the horse's brain understands what we're asking for. Because I like to ask people this, how does the horse, how does any gated horse know which gate you want them to do? Because they can trot, pace, gate, stepping pace, canter, and then do a nice gate. How is any horse supposed to know what gait we want them to do? And I like to ask this question at clinics. Um, and a lot of people are like, oh, I don't know. How, how do they know? Because they can do all of those, right? Pace, stepping pace, gait, broken trot, trot. The way we teach a horse their brain first is by stopping and praising when they get it right. So that's more of a stepping pace. It's not smooth. So I'm asking him to soften and drop his head. Um, and I'm being very, very light again because there is a shanked bit in his mouth. So I'm so still stepping pace, looking for that smooth gait. As soon as he softens and drops his head, we know he's gonna do a nice, even four beat gait. But until then, I'm asking him, so there, I think I'm just gonna go the other direction. I think, or stop and praise there because he was a little smoother. Um, at the beginning, I'd rather stop and praise for more knowing that as we go on, the horse is going to get it and it's going to be easier. And again, this horse is very good at standing, uh, but he's very, he easily breaks the pace, breaks the broken trot, and gets uncomfortable pretty quickly. He gates, but very quickly can get uncomfortable. And that's normal with a lot of horses. And obviously, if your horse is just pacing or just trotting this video, you're not there yet, but this is where you'll be once you start to get gait. Or if you have a horse that does a slow gait and you want faster, this is absolutely where you're gonna be. Um, because I'm gonna show uh, near the end, there's a lot of stop and praise for short amounts of gating, but then it really pays off at the end after just three lessons. So ask him to gait, a little bit of a stepping pace. So I'm asking him to soften. So he's not a high headed horse, there he started gating and now he's trotting. See how that bounce coming through? If you watch the diagonal, so I'm gonna be lifting my reins, lift it and then release. And then if he's a little trotty, or there he smoothed out so I stopped and praised. But you see my hands, it's important, watch my hands. I'm gonna lift when he gets, he's getting a little trotty. He's almost, it's a broken trot, but it's almost a dead trot. So I'm bouncing, you can watch me bounce. So I'm going to lift my reins very gently and my goal is to get him to put his head up and smooth out. That's all I'm looking for. And as soon as he smooths out, even for a step or two, I'll release. And then if he doesn't smooth out, I'll lift up again and then I'll release. See, I drop my hands and then I lift it up again. And right here, he started to do a little bit better. Yeah, more of a four beat, one, two, three, four. And as soon as I felt him smooth out, I stopped. Now, a lot of people would just be like, oh, we wanna keep going because it feels good. No. This is the problem. A lot of you think that will fix it. It won't. This will fix it. And you're going to see it. That's why I wanted you guys to see this horse. When he went trotty, you know, broken trot, gate, broken trot, gate, finally got a few steps of gate. I stopped and praised. Yes, you do need to pay attention and know the difference between the broken trot and the smooth gate. But you can watch me bouncing. It's not comfortable. This horse can gate perfectly smooth. And so when I'm riding him, I'm looking for that perfectly smooth gate all the time. FYI, this video is 18 minutes long total, so we, we still have another about 13 minutes. So there's a nice gait. Now he's getting a little trotty. Now watch my hands. Lift up and release. Lift up and release. Lift up. Lift up and release. Lift up and release. I never hold it so that all he... And again, this horse is very, very light, very, very soft. And uh, normally I would do it in a snaffle or a bitless bridle, doesn't matter to me which one you ever you prefer, but I fix it and I release. And I'm trying to get that smoothness to come through because uh, I can feel, I'm kind of bouncing in the saddle. I can tell, uh, especially with the broken trot, it usually feels like the back of the saddle is lifting up, but I, there's definitely a bounce. Like right there, he almost trotted and I'm trying to fix it by lifting the head up and trying to turn at the same time because he was heading toward the gate, you know, crossing over there. That's him doing that, not me. And right there I'm going to release and because he smoothed out a little bit 
probably because he wasn't pulling toward the gate, uh, but I'm not going to let him turn toward the gate. And then I'm going to stop and praise because he smoothed out at the end, but I had to lift up and release and lift up and release and lift up and release. Now, there are times when I lift up and hold, but as soon as the gate smooths out, I release. Um, but especially, it's, I wouldn't do that with the shanked bit. If you have a trotty horse, it needs, this kind of training, the head up, needs to be done in a snaffle. Now, this horse is pacey and trotty, uh, and so we just, and he's very responsive, so we just use this bit. But again, the horse started, he gated like three or four steps, and so he stopped. Now, again, so many people watch it and are like, that's, you can't, that's not enough, Ivy. All right, uh, I'm going to pause this here and answer some questions. So Pamela says, having trouble riding circles, keeping him in circles in gait. Any recommendations? Uh, okay, so the same, exactly what I'm doing here is if you can ride a couple steps on a circle, stop and praise. Okay, let's say a couple steps is no big deal. What you're going to do after that is you're going to go ahead and ask him to do a little bit more of a circle, a quarter circle. If he holds it, stop and praise. Um, it's possible, and a video will help, like to know why he's falling out of it. Is he getting trotty? Is he getting pacey? It actually matters. Chrissy says, in 2019, my horse could barely gate. With your help and using stop and praise, her horse gates consistently and fast now. Yeah, Chrissy's horse is amazing. She can gate fast. She can walk fast. She can canter. She can kind of do all of those really well. But Chrissy did a lot of stop and praise at the beginning because her horse was a little bit trotty. And we needed a way to teach the horse, like, oh, no, this is what we're doing. Um, so Pamela says her horse is pacey, not trotty, which is good to know. So, uh, and Pamela says at also to lower head at faster speeds, do you hold the hands down and slightly pull back or, okay, hang on, or lower the head, lift the hand, slightly pull back. Okay. So I never put my hands down low. A lot of people teach you should ask for head down by putting your hands by your knees, but I don't agree with that. Biomechanically, it teaches horses to shorten their neck and not lengthen it. So I keep my hands at about the level of my hips or my belly button, whether they're faster speeds or slower speeds. And uh, what I would recommend is doing a lot of leg yields. That can really help your horse balance. Uh, Chrissy asks, can you train in a bitless? Which is an excellent question. You absolutely can train all of this bitless. Uh, in my opinion, for most horses, bitless to teach softness can take two to three times as long as a bit, but that doesn't mean it's not worth it if you want to do it. Uh, Patty said, Lucas says, you've cracked the code. Yes, this is how you get a horse to gate, and I have been doing it on hundreds of horses. Most years, not counting 2020, I ride about 100 different horses. It ends up being 90 to 100, depending on how many lessons I give. Because I'll do 10 clinics a year, there's nine horses at a clinic, that's 90 right there. Not counting my own and lessons that I give, I end up riding about 100. And I've been doing that for like the last five or six years, riding 90 to 100 different horses a year. Those are that are gated or sometimes more. And this works better than anything I have tried. It's better than the bit. It's better than weights. It's better than a special saddle. Stop and praise works to get speed and consistency if you do it. You don't need a trainer to tell you. You may need to ride on a harder surface so you feel it. You may need to have a friend tell you if the horse is gating, but anybody can do stop and praise. All right, let's continue on. If I figure out, I think I was here. Yeah, right about here. Okay, so we've done stop and praise. I'm going to head out in, in just a minute and give you more. This horse stopping gives a horse a chance to relax, gives them a chance to breathe and possibly yawn. You'll notice my reins are totally loose. He's welcome to drop his head. He's able to chew. Uh, it's also important not to have a nose band too tight because it's important for a horse to chew. I'll probably do a free video on that next week. So again, looking for this horse to gate. The more he gates, the more he gets a loose rein and the faster I stop and praise. So that's a lovely little gate. Beautiful. Look at the reins are loose. Then he got, so it was a beautiful gate. So I stopped him. You notice how far he gated. Um, I'm going to go back and just show you. So here we're going to walk off. Right here, I'm going to ask for gate. So this is, it's a nice little gate. It's maybe 40 feet, maybe 50, half a circle about. And I stop him right away. How many people do you think would keep going, would ask for that horse to gate longer? That's the problem right 
there is so many trainers, so many riders, they'll tell you, no, keep him going. But I do not believe that. And you're watching me because of what I believe. And my solution is when they gate that well, he didn't break to a pace or a trot. It was a beautiful gate, slow, controlled, perfectly even. I stopped and praised. And the horse learned from that. And he's like, okay, that was good. I obviously did the right thing because it's about training the brain. Once you've trained the brain, then you can train the muscles and the body so that they can hold the gait longer. But if you skip this part, you're not going to have a consistent gait. So you will see me fix the gait. So if he gets trotty, I lift my reins. If he's pacey, I ask him to soften and drop his head. But as soon as he gates, I give him a loose rein. And not only do I give him a loose rein, but I stop and praise. And if your horse is, this horse is obviously can gait, right? If your horse is more trotty or pacey and not gating well, you're going to stop and praise for two steps of gait, which is why I recommend you ride on the road. It's where I do all of my gait training, where I can really hear it. And so I can stop and praise immediately. And if you buy my DVD and you watch the video on rags or sateen, you're going to see that I do stop and praise for two steps. And initially I get two steps of gait and lots of pace and walk <laughs> and then you know, it'll be a hundred feet before I get a couple steps and then I stop and praise. But after six days, what I end up getting is a quarter mile of gait from two steps to a quarter mile in about five or six training days. That is it. And the secret is stop and praise, but no one wants to do it. No one wants to spend the time training. So we're going to do, I think it's one more time. So this is day one again for training this guy. I think he's a Rocky but I'm not going to swear to it. He was very fun to ride. Uh, and what we're going to do is ask, we're looking for him to gate. And again, he knows how to gate a little bit, but we're looking for him to be consistent. So not break to the trot or the pace and for him to gate faster. Whenever you'd speed him up, he'd want a canner, which his owner let him. And we're going to address that in the, the, the day three. And he wants to break to the canner or he wants to break to the trot and his trot gate is not that smooth. There is lots of stopping and standing. If you scrub through footage of me riding, especially at clinics, there is very little movement and lots of stopping and standing because that stopping and standing, stopping and standing is where the training takes place. So same thing. If he gates, we're going to stop and praise. So let's take a look. Nice little gate. Nice little gate getting a little trotty. So I'm going to lean back and lift up a tiny bit, but there he smoothed out. On his own so we're gonna stop and praise um so that's another thing i have videos about leaning back so if a horse is trotting i might lean back a little like i did there and lift the reins so this uses a little audio uh this is day two same horse day two and we're working on the road here so i'm over the potholes he tends to get a little trotty here's the audio of the video Look at that gate. Wasn't that amazing? And you might go, but Ivy, he gated for 40 feet. Yes, but he didn't trot and he didn't pace and he stayed slow. And I stop and praise. That was lovely and perfect. That means you're making progress. 30 feet can very quickly turn into 300 or three miles with this if you are consistent. It's, I haven't changed the horse attack. I haven't put a different bit in. It's not how I ride because, and I don't have footage of it, but the owner got on and got him cating really well on day three. It's not about the tack. It's not about holding the reins tight. You're going to see the reins are loose while this horse is gating. It is about training the horse's brain and using stop and praise and fixing it when they get pacey or trotty. Notice the loose reins. I fix the gate as he got a little trotty, and then I drop my reins. Fix it, and hands down. Good, that was. And then he got a little trotty, and then I lift my reins, and then he gated perfectly, and then I stop and praise. It's that simple. It's simple, but no one wants to do it. Let me see what questions I have. I love answering questions. Sue says, okay, I didn't get before that it's lift and release versus lift and hold when she gets trotty. Explain why she was slowing stopping. 
Okay, I'm not quite sure I understand the question, but Sue, if you have a trotty horse, you ask for forward. With trotty horses, you need a lot of forward. Watch the trotty video. It talks about this. You need a lot of energy. Go forward. And I lift and hold with a snaffle if the horse is not gating at all. I lift and hold until the, the gate smooths out, and then I drop my reins and stop and praise. If your horse slows down, which is normal when you lift because they think you ask them to stop, use your legs and go, 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 or use a crop. Sorry, that probably gave it a little bit loud. You have to go. Energy, energy, energy. I don't know how to tell you this in a way that you'll get this other than go forward. Chrissy says, me asking my horse to gate when she wants to canter results in a lovely walk to canter departure and lots of laughter. Yeah. <laughs> well, yes, that can be hilarious too when your horse is very responsive and tries to guess exactly what you want, as Chrissy said here. Megan said, is it all right to give a small treat from the saddle when I stop and praise? Or do you prefer to stop without distractions going on? Megan, I love giving treats. <laughs> So um, my horses get food when they stop, if I'm doing stop and praise, and it's to from the saddle. I'll give a treat, a handful of grain, a small handful of hay, chopped hay, alfalfa pellets, whatever you want, and I'm totally fine with that, though it is good to still stay there for a minute or two. In some of my videos on the private training group, I actually use food to help a horse that's very distracted. So I had a horse that was totally focused on other horses, and I fed him lots of food and totally changed that horse's attitude. Um, Chrissy says it's personal preference about whether to give a treat. Yep. Uh, I gave Mara a treat from the saddle. So yes, it is personal preference. I do it all the time, but there's lots of people that are not comfortable, which is why I teach stop and praise as a complete alternative to food. But it is totally fine to use food alongside that stop and praise. That's a great question. Megan said, perfect. I'm a dog person and I use treats a lot. Yes. Um, I'm in favor of treats. I use treats all the time. Uh, I use food, usually hay or grain when I, my horses, when the farrier comes, I use treats all the time when they do well. Just remember to continue to raise the criteria, which you know from working with dogs, uh, criteria and duration. Let's continue with this horse. Let's skip ahead to the, where were we? Oh, almost there. Hang on. I think we were about here. So even on the driveway, there's lots of stopping and standing. And yes, there's a little bit more gait. Early horses may only gait five steps and I'll stop and praise. But still, I'll stop and praise. This horse, I'm still stopping. I don't let him keep going. Notice the loose reins. Watch my hands. Loose rein, fix the gait. Actually, I was stopping him there. So I shortened my reins because I stopped him because it was a perfect gait. And he gave me a little bit of speed. And hopefully you guys could hear that. Okay. So I stop and praise. That was probably only like 30 steps of gate, 30 feet. And I stopped him. Uh, again, if the horse is a newbie at gating, I might stop after five steps. But this horse does know it. But the, the problem is so many people would ask him to gate the whole driveway and then stop and praise. But when we're early on teaching, the more you stop and praise when they get it right, the faster they learn it. There's no way around that. Uh, you can use stop and praise for all of your training and you can add food. So for example, in my videos on rags and sateen, uh, we had a lot of green grass on the side of the road. And a lot of the times at the beginning when I would stop, I would let the horse go take a bite of grass or several bites and do my stop and praise while the horse is eating grass on the side of the road. Now this horse doesn't need more food and we didn't have long grass and we didn't want to teach him that. Um, I teach my horses that when I stop, if I take them to the grass and say, okay, they can eat some, uh, but I don't let them do it every time. And after a few days, I'm doing it less and less and doing stop and praise less and less. As you'd see, it's in the DVD. And I think one of them is uh, on the private training group where I take the horse from gating, barely gating, like not gating to gating in five or six days. So there's fixing the horse when they're trotting. Notice how much faster he's going actually. Look at the loose Good. reins. I'm not holding him in gait. Here I open my legs, ask him to slow down. I'm gonna stop and praise. I was asking for gait, but totally giving him a loose rein. He was allowed to put his head where he wanted. He was allowed to go the speed he wanted as long as it was smooth. And he just did 
so well. I was so happy with with how he did there. Um, and I'm using that. I mean, I'm asking him to go that far, but that's a good cue for me to stop. Or, you know, just to stop and praise. And you're going to be, I don't know about surprised, but when we watch this next video, now I think this next time I'm looking at how fast the horse goes uh, because they were concerned about not having a fast, smooth gait. Like he would stay fast at like five miles an hour. Um, and I'm looking at my watch to check. I was setting it so that I could see how fast we're going because it's GPS enabled. And I got him going between seven and eight miles an hour gating smoothly uh, on the last day. And you're going to see that. And the uh, biggest issue was correcting him so he didn't try to canter because he, he thought like, oh, when I go this fast, I'm supposed to canter. And so one of the biggest reasons why I never canter from the gate, I try and canter from the walk unless you're showing. If you're in the show ring, it's different. Um, but because he'd been allowed, because his, his gait wasn't smooth, he'd been allowed just to go into a canter. And so this next day is kind of fixing that because the owner had kind of trained him, oh, once you get this fast, you break to a canter. And I was like, no, you're going to hold the gate. No cantering allowed. But he ended up gating well, very, very fast mine, and a long that. ways. Little Pacey. He might be just slightly ouchy on the gravel. We didn't good have a good boy. place to ride. Good job. That, that wood didn't have rocks and he was barefoot. So because it wasn't very smooth, I didn't stop and praise. I did it again. A little trotty, which he normally gets a little trotty if he goes over. Beautiful. Six. A little bit trotty, so you see my raise my hands. Yeah, good boy. So yeah, we're, I figured that was about six, right about where I'd put. Very nice. Lovely. So this is day three. So he's only had two one-hour sessions. This is the third one-hour session on day three. Uh, he's, I'm going to be asking him to gate longer now. We've already done some training that was shorter. Um, and I'm going to ask him to go faster, but not to canter. So you're going to see me check him, and that's because he's cantering. Look at that beautiful gate. So I'm, I'm, there he's Pacey because I checked him because he wanted a canter. So now I'm asking for a head down and uh, without cantering because he, he, sometimes when he feels because it's a shanked bit and it's pretty, it, it's very strong. See, there's the canter and I check him. That's a nice gate. That's nice. Look at that beautiful gate. But I'm watching for him and then the reins are loose and I'm going to stop and praise or I'm just going to walk there. And I basically, I would have stopped down there, but everybody is down at this end by the camera. So I decided to just walk and then we're going to go stop and stand where people can ask questions and, and hear me. So I didn't have to yell. Because after three days of talking for nine hours each day, at least my voice gets a little hoarse and yelling is harder. So normally I would have stopped him right there and praised. And oh, what I'm doing is actually just walking down by the people and stopping and praising, just so you know that's why it's different. So he gated quite a lot, but he tried to canter, and he was a little pacey. And when I was asking him to soften, he was like, I'm not used to someone asking me to do something. And so a couple times he threw his head up, and then he got more pacey. But then he started gating, and I gave him a totally loose rein. I'm ready to pick up the reins if we need to slow down or do something like that. But overall... I let him have that loose rein and only fix it if he breaks or tries to canter or go too fast. So here I'm going to go the other direction, goes right into a beautiful gate. It's really a nice gate. And again, I'm looking for fast, specifically because they want to train fast, but he's not allowed to canter. Like that's a beautiful speed. That's probably about seven miles an hour right there. And notice my reins are not tight, except when I correct him. Any kind of canter, I'll correct. Or trotty or pacey. He's, there you go. There he tried to, you saw that trying to canter on that front end. And so I didn't want to stop and praise there. That's a beautiful little gate. And so I stopped and praised because he held that gate nicely. Um, and then tried to video, but they missed it. But <laughs> that was beautiful. And again, I come by the people. Otherwise, I would have stopped him right where he was at. But I wanted to come over here. And face people rather than be facing away from them so it is a little bit different at a clinic versus when i'm just riding and i loose rein so he's allowed to stretch down the reins are long enough for that 
Make sure your reins are long enough for the horse to stretch all the way down. If they're not, you need to get new reins or different reins. Very nice. And it, that's all. That's, that's it. Uh, you're going to see me keep working with them. We still have a minute left. No. There's like three minutes left. Sorry. Uh, and it's just repeating this. We got gait. We got some speed. We fixed the canter. And then he held it nicely. So we stopped and praised. And this horse isn't ready to be trail ride and gait a mile yet. But maybe in a week he'd be ready once we build the muscles and build his brain, but that stop and praise is what helps that horse understand what gait we want him to take. And we can fix it. When he gets trotty, we lift up and release as soon as it smooths out. When he gets pacey, we ask for that softness and release to get head down, just like in my videos. We do have a quick question of where is this mare from? Well, this clinic was in Virginia and they lived very close to this. So I'm not sure where the mare was from. Um, I, I don't remember. Um, but she'd had some, the lady had done some very, very good training with her and continues to train. It was just trying to fix a little bit of that gait and not let her canter. Him, him canter. And notice how long I stop. It's a long time to stand there. Uh, sorry, got a little distracted. Somebody was calling it a mare and I was like, it's a gelding, isn't it? But I'm pretty sure it is a gelding. Uh, anyway, so uh, asking for gait. Got Pacey there, so I'm asking him to soften. Nice little gait. Loose rein. Anytime I feel it get a little trotty or a little canter, I'll be checking. You'll see my hands, watch my hands. Uh, you might have to go back and watch again to watch, there's a little pacey. I'm asking for that softness to come through for the head to go down, very pacey. Now trying to canter, trying to canter and I'm like, ah, ah, ah. So I lift up and back for cantering. It's like, don't even think about cantering, but keep going. That's a nice little gait. And again, I'm looking for a little bit of speed. I'm kind of trying to push the speed envelope specifically today and not let the horse canter or pace or trot. See, there's that canter coming in and then, then he stopped. It was good. Nice. We went all the way around the arena. Not perfect gait, but right, we're gonna stop over here, I believe. So again, I'm, normally I would stop right where I was, but I'm stopping or I'm slowing down to the walk immediately. Loose rein and then coming over by the people so we can talk. That's super important to realize. All right, I think that's the last little bit of gating. Um, but again, if you scrub through my footage, there is so much standing. It doesn't even look like I spend any time training because there's so much stop and praise. Um, so Janet says it's awesome. Christine asked where this, uh, oh, sorry, where's this lovely farm? This is in Virginia and it is beautiful. We did a clinic there last year um, and it's in, it's in Western Virginia near Culpeper. Melissa says, I was taught to keep a tight rein to get a fast gait. Melissa, I can't tell you what to do. And for a lot of people watching, you either believe what I teach or you don't. And that's okay. What's important is I train on a loose rein. Now, to get a faster gait, I might use a little bit of contact to help the horse, but my goal is to get a fast gait on a loose rein. So if you've seen my video, I have a Tennessee walking horse. He's a, he's a buckskin paint. So if you look for that video, if you can't find it, let me know. I am riding him and I ride him probably about, it's like half a mile. It's a quarter, at least a quarter mile. It's probably closer to half a mile. And he gates, max speed was about 12 and a half miles per hour. So let's say the average was 10. Completely loose rein. He racks for half a mile on a completely loose rein at about average 10 to 11 miles per hour. He was flying. And maybe that's not like a racking horse speed of 20 miles an hour, but for most people, that's really fast. And he was flying and the reins were loose. Nothing was tight. And he was, uh, he was just gating beautifully. And so I do not believe that you have to hold the reins tight. The way I train is train on a loose rein. And I don't train racking horses. So if you're looking to get into that sport, you know, maybe don't follow me because that's not what I do. Same thing for the show show ring. I'm not here 
for the show ring and to help you get your horses. I'm here to help you get your horses calm and to get them gating smoothly at all speeds, whether you want slow or you want faster. So I hope that video has helped you and given you ideas on what to go work on to get that consistency and the speed in gait. So many people don't believe what I just showed you. Gating fast, consistently on a loose rein. People don't believe it. Well, I just showed you guys. Anybody that's watching this video, and please share. That's so good. Anybody that's watching, I just showed you with a horse, and I've done it with many, many more. Uh, Chrissy says, what you teach does help show horses. Well, Chrissy, you're right. I do. It does help show horses, but a lot of show people don't like what I teach, even though it would help the horses, even if they rode differently in the show. Because Chrissy does show, but she doesn't ride year round like she's in the show ring. Her horse has a loose rein and she taught it to be relaxed first, and then she can show. Nancy says, how can you get a fox trotter to stay in gait? Every time she gates and I praise with loose rein, she goes into a fast trot and almost takes off. Okay, so it sounds like, <laughs> so uh, what I would tell you is actually, Nancy, go back and watch the whole video because praising while you're going forward isn't enough. I have trained lots of fox trotters to fox trot on a loose rein. You can see it in some of my free videos. They can learn to fox trot. Every time she gates, I want you to stop and praise. And I want you to ride circles on a loose rein. You actually have to train a loose rein separately. Watch my head down videos. Um, I have two out. They're actually all on YouTube and they're all on my private training page. You can watch those now. But they'll be coming out all night. The three, four, and five parts will be coming out next week live, Monday through Wednesday. Um, and that's important because it teaches you how to have a loose rein. Because you have to have a loose rein and you know how to fix the trot, lift the reins, but don't let the horse run off. And I teach this in my training videos. Gail says, fun, we are trying your ideas in my Pacey Icelandic. We have been able to get him to do a four beat walk now. Our challenge is he's been ridden by several different people. He's my guest horse. Yeah, that is really hard. <laughs> when you have multiple people riding your horse, you have to spend, and I know they tend to be the, the horse that you just throw people on and you don't ride them that much. If you have a horse that's like that, but you want them to gate, you need to spend two or three times as much time on that horse to get the gate solid and teach the people that are going to ride how to ride, including you can show my videos. If you know someone's coming over, if he's the guest horse, send him a video on how to ride gated horses. Um, but yes, it's very challenging when lots of people are riding, different people. Melissa says, I love you and want to learn from you. I just wanted your opinion about a tight rein. I have a Tennessee walking horse. Melissa, no worries at all. I, it's a great question. And the, my biggest problem is that things like that, keeping the rein tight to get fast gait, have been taught, but no one, like, it's not really true. And no one is teaching differently, which is what I'm here to do, is that you don't have to do that in order to get gait and that you can start to change the way horses are ridden. But it takes training. You can't just take that Tennessee walking horse and give it a completely loose rein, throw the reins away and have it gait. It do if your horse was gating. It doesn't work that way. It takes training them to gait on a loose rein. At Chrissy's horse gates on a loose rein, but it didn't start that way. We have footage from two years ago of this mare being very trotty and how I showed how to use a loose rein and how to use you know, the training, the head up to get that smooth gait. And then Chrissy went and she did training, hours and hours of training. And this shows you how a horse can gait a little bit. And in three hour training sessions, go to a horse that went from being, un being inconsistent and not gating fast to gating very fast. Again, so I got to about seven and a half, eight miles an hour. It wasn't consistent yet, but again, I'd only been riding her three days and we'd only worked on speed on the last day. We were working on consistency and a loose rein on that, that horse. Uh, so it's up to you to decide that you want to train your horse to ride on a loose rein and to do the work. Um, and again, when I say work, it doesn't have to be every single time you ride, you spend an hour on this. But it means you work on head down in a loose rein every time you ride. Every time. And the horse is going to do it well with just a couple of, you know, a couple of sessions, the horse is going to start doing it and you're only going to spend five minutes on it or you're going to do it on the trail and it'll be fine. But some horses are going to take a lot more and every horse is different. I've had horses, again, that I worked with head down virtually the entire clinic. 
the entire three days. Um, where this horse, we literally worked on gait those three days because they already had taught most of those things. They'd already taught the softness. They'd already done all of that. Okay, does anybody have any more questions? They're great questions. And I love questions. And I think I answered all of them. Uh, please share this video with any of the groups you're on or your friends. That's the way that more people are going to see it. And we're going to change a lot of people's minds. We have so many new people that see these videos that, that don't know. They've never heard of Stop and Praise or giving the horse a loose rein. Not because they're horrible people, but because wherever they bought the horse from and whatever resources they've been given have all been hold those reins tight, keep the horse going, don't stop and praise. But this works. I, in 2017, my brother and I drove out west and we did almost 30 lessons, usually one hour, one and a half hour lessons all around the western U.S. And just, I only had one lesson to make a difference. It wasn't even a clinic. And I found, like, I was so tempted to push the horse for that entire hour and a half, right? I only have an hour and a half to make a difference. What I found was the more I did stop and praise, the more I let the horse stand, the more change I got. It didn't fix the problem all the time, but the horse was happy, the horse didn't get frustrated, and we made huge progress just because I let the horse stand there more uh, for what it's worth. Okay. Chrissy, a different Chrissy, asks, do you need to lunge the horse to train him to gait? Absolutely not. Can you lunge gated horses? Absolutely yes. But I do my clinics and most of the horses are not lunged. I hop right on and work with them. You can lunge. Your goal is to get softness and head down. And if the horse is pacey, use poles to get gait. It doesn't work if the horse is trotty. Megan says, is there a specific video that I should search for for work on loose reins? I believe my horse was taught to gait on contact as well. Actually, Megan, my head down videos, so I had one yesterday, one the day before, and watch those two videos or um, ask me for the link to the YouTube. If you go to my YouTube channel, all the videos are there, all five, talking about head down, and it talks a lot about loose reins. So there's five videos. Um, it's a great question. And maybe I'll need to do a specific video on that. But I, um, I'll try to share some links with you that show horses gating on a loose rein. Because it's super important and you just saw me do it. Uh, I could probably go on talking for hours, peeps. But it's already been 43 minutes. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, next week, we're going to finish the Head Down series. So watch for that for live videos. And you can join my private training group or buy my DVD. But anyway, I hope you guys have a great weekend and it warms up wherever you're at. In Texas, it's cold and I'm looking at snow. <laughs> Go figure. But most of the year, it's not like, most of the winter, it's not like that. Anyway, you guys take care. You got this.